Well, thanks for having us. Um, my name is Andy Von Dorn. We got Jonathan, Matt, Todd, and uh, Yofred here. And we are Team SMAC Cancer. So SMAC stands for Sock Monkeys Against Cancer. Uh, it's a foundation um, founded by Jen Windrum, who was our client for this project. And uh, she really went through a personal battle um, recently with her mother. Uh, this is Leslie, her mom, and she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer about six years ago. Leslie lived in Phoenix, Jen is here in Omaha, so she, there were 2,000 miles in between, and they were trying to, she was trying to come up with something that could always be by her mom's side, even though she, she could not physically be there. So came up with the idea of giving her a sock monkey, and it really took off. So she came up with Sock Monkeys Against Cancer, and uh, right now there are two sock monkeys. There is Nomo, which is the one on the right, and Phoenix is on the left. Um, Phoenix is specifically for lung cancer. She wants to eventually come out with a sock monkey for every type of cancer. Nomo is just an all around cancer fighting monkey. So um, he's just the general one for everybody. She hears lots of awesome stories from people going through this. And she tries to find people that maybe they can't afford a monkey. So they, she tries to find somebody that's willing to cover the cost of the monkey for them. So this is Patty. So an awesome quote from her, I became a smack angel and it felt so good the day I bought that monkey and knew it was on its way to a lovely lady who would request one. And she also hears the opposite side. So somebody who wasn't able to afford it. So Jamie, my Phoenix meant a lot to me, it makes a stranger feel loved. So uh, this is the, the awesome uplifting side of the story. The uh, bad part of the story is this is what the process looks like today. So it's just chaos, emails and social media and canned Word documents and all sorts of different things. So this was the struggle that we were given, how to make this process of pairing somebody that can't afford a sock monkey with somebody who is able to cover the cost. So to talk about some of the goals and what we went through with that, I'm gonna turn it over to John here. Thanks, so as Andy said, our primary goal with the project was to match um, someone who's willing to give a monkey with someone who needs a monkey. Um, Decreasing the manual tasks in between. Right. The, uh, uh, so Jen would, the process before Smack Angel program, Jen would go out to social media, find someone who was asking for a monkey, and then she'd go find someone uh, that would want to supply the monkey. So it was very time consuming on her part. Um, so we developed a process to where the user submits a request for a monkey, and then that is instantly available for any end user to see once they visit either smackcancer.com or the Smack Angel website. We also wanted to make sure it was expandable for Jen so that as her program continues to grow, um, she doesn't need a lot of code knowledge to maintain the site, the templates, um, and adding stock monkeys, things of that nature. Another uh, goal we had was to increase the program awareness. So we integrated uh, Facebook comments, Twitter, Pinterest, things of that nature to try to get the word out about what Jen's been doing. And finally, our last challenge was to integrate it into her existing site, smackcancer.com. Um, since it's a separate process, we have a, decided a plug-in that goes onto her main site um, that shows the requests that have been in the database or in the system previously. So on her primary site, if the picture is on there and there's no ribbon on the bottom corner, that, that request is live. And you can become that person's angel. Uh, to talk more about the full site, I'll hand it over to to introduce Nomo right from the beginning to give the sock monkeys an immediate presence on the site. Also towards the top of the page, we wanted to show pictures of the participants of the program so that the site's users can see the faces of those people that can potentially help out. The user can get involved in three different ways, which are displayed here. You can either give a sock monkey to someone, you could request a sock monkey for yourself or nominate someone else for a sock monkey. Throughout the rest of our landing page, we have user quotes about people's experiences on receiving and hanging out with their new sock monkeys. Okay. 
And on our footer, we have social media icons because social media connectivity is also an important part of the snack control program. And here's Todd for a user flow. Okay, there are two aspects to the website. The first aspect is to request a sign. So a person who has cancer can go to the website and they can request that a sock can be sent to them. Also, uh, a person that they know someone who's going through cancer can nominate that a sock can be sent to their friend or family or whoever, whoever that may be. So here's the two options on the site. And the person that does make this request fills out a very simple form where they choose the sock monkey they want. And also, they provide some uh, basic information about the person receiving it. And that's it. That's a pretty simple request. Now, on the flip side, there's <coughs> giving the, I guess the second aspect of the site is giving that sock monkey to someone. As we like to call it, become a, yeah, a uh, becoming a sock angel. So we'd like to encourage everyone here, uh, after the site gets released, is to uh, become a sock uh, monkey angel for someone. All you have to do is look, give, find someone you want to be an angel for, and then become an angel for them. And that's it. And that's all that there is to become an angel. All right, thanks, Todd. Um, so uh, this part, I guess, this doesn't necessarily tie into how you guys can interact with it, but we're Omaha Code School. We really wanted to brag about how in addition to being user friendly, it's admin friendly. We're kind of short on time, so I'll kind of skip through this, but just wanted to show real quick, we do have admin actions where Jen can keep track of all of her stuff. She has email templates that she can modify, and then she also can uh, add sock monkeys as the program progresses. So what's next? We're looking forward to launching this really soon as part of smackcancer.com. Okay, so um, there's a couple different people you might want to contact. Here's some contact information for Jen. Um, if you need to contact Jen directly about anything um, pertaining to the SMAC cancer program, if you have any follow-ups for her. And then here is the dev team. So there were Fer uh, Britt and Lachlan weren't able to be here today, but they did help us out a bunch on the project. Um, with that, we turn it over to questions. Hello, thank you for having us. We are Team Omahu, and we were tasked with recreating the Omahu website. And in order to talk about this, we're going to talk about something that most everyone knows. Omaha is very unique. We have so many talented people in the creative and tech industry. And Omaha itself has been one of the most up-and-coming cities for, you know, forever. We know this. <laughs> and because of this, it's very important to network, just like anywhere else. And Part of networking is creating meaningful relationships, and it's always a task to figure out how to do this effectively. And it always usually starts with the person's first name. <laughs> so you're at a conference, okay, and you get to talking to someone that you recognize their face. You know that they're a who's who in Omaha, but you just, you just don't remember their name, and this, it's just not happening. So this is a missed opportunity for some effective networking. So in comes Omaha. So before such conference, what you can do is go through and browse through everyone that has signed up on this website, which just happens to be the who's who of Omaha. And in order to effectively uh, categorize your networking skills, you can actually browse through them with categories. So if you have a specific goal for your company or your life, you can figure this out on this website. So in order to talk about what it means to be a member and everything, we're going to go to Jay. Thanks, Caitlin. I'd like to take a few moments here and show you how to um, sign up for a user account on Omahu. First, you'll be able to add your beautiful face onto this website. Then you'll be able to add personal information. This is an interesting part of this, that you'll be able to add and choose categories that you'd like to be associated with. Then you'll be able to add uh, your web presence and give yourself uh, a bio. It's optional information. You can add your personal, you can add your company, and some social uh, network uh, communication there. And once you do that, you'll be part of Omahu and part of the growing creative community here in Omaha. Now I'd like to pass it on to Kara with Portfolio. Right, 
So once you have signed up for Omahu and when you're checking out anyone else's profiles, this is how it's laid out. Um, you can see their company and what categories they're associated with. Uh, whatever social media you filled in, they show up right there. Um, something that's new to uh, this version of Omahu is that you can now add your work. So um, you can upload as many images as you would like that are associated with what you do. I just went ahead and added a few of my illustrations for my profile and when you check any of them out, they you know, show the big picture and you're able to display to everyone else how you contribute to the creative community. <coughs> and with that, I'll pass it off to Dan for how we help you guys with networking. Thanks, Kara. Yep. So one of the uh, visions we yep. had uh, for the site was to be used, as uh, Kate mentioned, as a kind of a networking tool to learn about the community and its people. Um, and in that, that regard, we added a fun little uh, game to quiz yourself in the faces that you'll find on the site. Um, it allows you to take a guess at the person's name and uh, what company they work for. Um, there's no uh, formal scorekeeping, so if, if you're the kind of person that gets this cold sweats when you hear the words test or quiz or something like that, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, but on the other hand, it does provide you immediate feedback so you can uh, Use it to check the accuracy of your answers, see what the actual answers are, and then make it outlines for later use. Um, so, for instance, <coughs> the, the, uh, the name of the company. Um, and as you go to the answer page, it's immediately apparent that you got the answer wrong. The red text kind of draws your attention to that fact. But we also still provide the uh, correct answers so you can make a, a note for later when you run across that page again. Um, on the other hand, uh, we'll use uh, somebody from our group so I can say what the right answers would look like uh, if you got it right. So hopefully, you know, he's part of our group. So I, I know I know his name and what he what he works for. So as you can see, the uh, notification for correct answers is just a short message in green text. Uh, but we also still provide the correct answers so that for positive reinforcement for later. So it's a it's a little bit of a simplistic game, but. Uh, we hope that it could be useful as a tool for uh, learning and enhancing the knowledge about the community. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Michael to talk about the events. Okay. At this point in the Omen New Experience, you have joined our online community. You've searched around the site and found some like-minded people you'd like to meet, and you've learned their names through our name game. So where do you meet them? Meet them at events. There are some calendars around the community that uh, serve this goal. But we wanted to set ourselves out from the pack a little bit and offer a couple extra features that we think aren't present anywhere else. Um, so just going through the interaction, as you come to the events page, I need to start this video. Um, it starts and you can click on any one of these events to expand out the specific details of time, where it's at, address, and you can also see who else is going to an event. If you're logged in, you can mark your attendance. And this is especially important because you can uh, plan beforehand and learn people's names, or you can go to our past events and remember them after you've met them. Um, with that, I'd like to pass it off to Brandon for an especially cool feature of options. Thank you. Got one minute. Awesome. <laughs> 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 so for, uh, on the back end section, we have an admin section for um, all the events that get submitted. You can either submit it as a user, uh, or we have another feature where it automatically scrapes uh, any websites that you uh, want and pulls in the events from there and displays it on our upcoming events page here. Uh, but then we do have to have the, uh, the admin approve it um, just to make sure nothing weird gets through. <laughs> and that's just came for Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> So in conclusion, Omaha offers several networking devices for the Omaha area. It's able to be forked on GitHub so other communities can use it. And the future of Omaha, or Omaha is actually the future of Omaha. So as Omaha continues to grow, so will Omaha. And thank you so much for having us. This is available right now. So you should totally sign up and be a part of the community. Thanks. Thank you.